Why? I don't know. I covered it Sunday night on Life, Liberty, and Levin on the Fox News channel. Been lots of people commenting on my social sites and I'm never watching again. And you know what? We had blockbuster ratings. But people want to learn. Doesn't mean in the end we agree on everything, but people want to learn. That's what I try and do behind this microphone. That's what I try and do with my book. That's what I try and do with Levin TV and now Life, Liberty, and Levin. One day I won't be here. One day I won't be doing this. I'll either be retired or hit by a bus. You never know. But I'm keeping quite a hectic pace. And I'm not doing this just to be a pom-pom boy or a pom-pom girl. I'm not doing this to be a rockette. I'm doing this because I want to get the word out there about liberty, even when I might be in the minority. And I may well be in the minority but when it comes to trade. Trade, for some reason, the issue of trade is complicated to a lot of people, and it's unpopular. And yet, the reason we have such robust trade is because of you. Free trade, one of the greatest blessings which a government can confer on a people is in almost every country unpopular. Thomas Babington Macaulay, 1824. In a book by Dr. Douglas Irwin, Free Trade Under Fire. Another book, I told you what I do. Some people have other hobbies, you know, they smoke pot, they drink, they do this, they, I read, and read, and read, and read. And by the way, not just books that I might agree with, but I read all kinds of books on progressivism by progressives. I want to hit a couple of these because the president is pounding away at a private company called Harley Davidson. I'm starting to think that maybe what we ought to do is set up a special office in the White House where any time a company wants to invest overseas, or any time a company wants to increase its prices, or any time a company wants to lay off somebody, they have to get permission from the White House. Now, protectionism. Trade interventions are usually misguided and often costly. Tariffs and quotas on imports Redistribute, listen to this, redistribute income from consumers to producers. From you to a producer. And trade barriers reduce exports and harm downstream user industries. Like Harley Davidson. But Harley was going to do it anyway. I'll get to that in a minute. Because now we're all supposed to hate Harley Davidson. Why do I hate Harley Davidson? Now particularly you guys and gals who ride these wonderful motorcycles, you're supposed to hate the company now. Because that's what the president has told you to do. And he says, he may tax them like never before. Can a president just tax a company like never before if he disagrees with the company? Is this what we want out of our government or any president for that matter? I told you I love Trump, but there's areas where I disagree with him. This happens to be the biggest one. Now, jobs will be saved in industries that compete against imports. Reducing trade saves those jobs only by destroying jobs elsewhere in the economy. Opponents of free trade have also argued that imports have replaced good high-wage jobs with bad low-wage jobs. That's not what the statistics show. The truth turns out to be quite the opposite. Jobs in industries that compete against imports are mainly low-skill and consequently low-wage jobs. I saw one uh, contributor on Fox not too long ago say, well, you know, Ronald Reagan, he put tariffs on all motorcycles except Harley-Davidson because Harley-Davidson was going under and he wanted to protect it. And he did. 